Hello everybody. Get your water. Make sure you've eaten enough healthy food and uh, make sure you've gotten your sleep. We're still working on that. Yeah. But get your sleep. Get the sun that you need. You're not being gone now that you said that. Get the plants that you need to clean up the air in your space. And once you've done that, keep watching. Wow. No one's going to watch this video now, Micah. Well, I, I hope everyone realizes that we care more about your health than you watching this video. So if you can take care of your health, Love it. who cares what videos you watch? Love it. But if you can't, this is a great resource for anybody because we actually talk about it. We don't distract you. We don't flash lights into your face. We don't blare these little sounds that trigger you and make you excited to be there for that moment. We're not entertaining. And there's a reason for that. Entertainment is the same, basically the same word as detainment. Mm -hmm. Do you know what it means to be detained? They usually oh, yeah. use that in a prison set yeah. setting. Yeah. Be like, I have to detain these prisoners. They're, they're detainees. And so that's the idea. Now, I wouldn't go so far as to say entertainment is, is slavery or <laughs> is incarceration, but it, but it is meant to distract you from your tummy grumbling and your, you know, your lack of vitamin D, that you don't feel energized, that you're dehydrated, you're, you know, your blood pressure's high, you're sweating, and it's not even hot. So be aware, be aware of your body and how it's reacting to the situation that you're in. Uh, before we get into today's topic, I want to invite you to subscribe to our channel. It's an easy thing that you might be able to do to help us out. Give this video a like. That also helps us out. That's really easy to do. I know I can see how subscribing for some people they're like, eh, I don't want these videos coming up on my feed. But liking it, it's like, what is that going to, it's not going to hurt. No, hurt it's not going to hurt you. Or leaving a comment, that's not going to hurt you. No. Or it's not going to inconvenience you And even subscribing, we're, we're consistent with our, with our videos. Mm -hmm. Monday through Friday, Monday through Saturday, I should say, at yeah. 5 p.m. Mountain Standard Time. That's what we send out to you. So it's, it's regular, you know when it's going to pop up, and it's not that annoying if it's regular. I agree. We were doing clips back. Anyway, we were doing clips back and that was filling people's, you know, inboxes pretty quickly, their notifications. That's true. Not anymore. It's just the straight up video. Mm -hmm. So today's topic is what is healthy movement? I love this because even though I'm still not doing healthy movement all that much, you're looking at the fly that's buzzing around me. Yeah. Oh, it's in my hair. Did you just? I did catch it, but it got out. Go ahead. That's amazing. You're like Mr. Miyagi well, in the Karate Kid movie. I didn't do it well enough. You're well, almost like Mr. Well, Miyagi. Well, hopefully he'll leave us alone. Anyway. Um, so yeah, natural movement is something I've, st I started researching a couple of years ago. I started kind of getting into into the research. I haven't really physically done the natural movement that I would like to see myself doing today. But, um, so yeah, so, so many people are like, if you want to be healthy, if you want to be fit, you need to exercise. If you want to lose weight, you should go for a run, um, should run away and get your adrenaline going so that your body goes into fight or flight mode. And you think that you're your body goes into freak out mode and you think that you've run a, you're running away from a bear or a predator. <laughs> <laughs> and then when, and then when you're all done, so you feel so much better because you've escaped the bear or predator. Sometimes you're introducing the thing, but you're already making a whole bunch of, a whole bunch of judgments and. And so it's just this like, what is she talking about? And it's like, you just lay it in there. I'm sorry. I think it comes down to this one idea. Um, we're always constantly talking about genetic. Mm -hmm. Genetic, 
slash evolution, mm -hmm. right? So this idea that we used to act and be differently as homo sapiens, right? As humans, yeah, we acted differently so many thousands of years ago. Right. And, um, and that included, by our estimations, a lot more activity, physical activity. Yeah. Physical activity, outdoors, um, moving around. Because it was inherent in being human. So the idea nowadays is that, well, we're not doing that anymore. We're just sitting around. We're sedentary. Uh -huh. And so we need to actively choose to move. Right. It's not something that just naturally happens. And um, I see a lot of reasoning in that. I don't love the evolution genetic timeline. I, I personally think that we humans have been the type to wear clothes and to create shelter for longer than we think. Yeah. Um, when I lived in Sardinia for mm -hmm. a while, Sardinia as the Americans call it, English speakers call it. Those English speakers. Sardinia. Sardinia is what it's called. Okay. I lived in Cagliari. Wow. And in, around that area, Cagliari. they have these things called the uh, Nuragi. Nura, okay. Nuragi. I think it's, I forget whether it's a U or O. You can look it up. I think it's U. Nuragi. And what they are is that the oldest houses ever. Mm. And they're just rocks piled on top of each other. And the idea is that, and they're beautiful, they're beautiful by the way, the rocks are just wonderfully formed. It looks like they, it, it honestly looks like they like laser cut each stone to fit perfectly with one another. Wow. That's how it looks. It's very pretty. Anyway, so they have these Nuragi. Well, the Nuragi I think is the name of the people, but the, they have these houses and they're still there. And I, I think the idea is that they're close to 100,000 years old, these houses. So this idea that we live in caves, or we lived in, you know, out in the open, just isn't a thing. Yeah. And so obviously we can't find evidence of them cooking or wearing clothes, you know what I mean? Or even, what, even whether they farmed or not, we can't really find a whole lot of evidence for that. Uh -huh. Their houses are still there. So it's like, man, these, these are, I mean, they're small, but they're houses, you know? Yeah. They're about as big as this room, but it's like, they're as big as this room. And they're beautiful. Anyway, yeah. uh, they don't have any, like, art or anything inside. Basically, what I'm saying is we, we don't have a whole lot of stuff from them. But my argument is, is no, you don't necessarily have to choose to do something physical or not. Hmm. I think you should be aware of how much physicality and movement you need. Uh-huh. And it's and it's I mean I'll almost guaranteed it's going to be a little more than what you're doing now. Mm -hmm. There's some people who take it really far and to those people I say cool it like 50 times. But the average person it's like no, you probably it probably does require more movement. From, right. From bodily movement. Uh huh. And, but here's the thing. I don't know if you guys are like me, but I, I found that most humans do enjoy physical activity, some form of physical activity. And does it really matter what form it is, so long as you like it and you participate in, regu in it regularly? Which is why I like to talk about recreation. I think that's a good word mm -hmm. to put it. It's, it's a recreation. It's, uh, it's you enjoying the physical activity. I think that's special. So I like to play frisbee. So for me, passing a frisbee with my brother or with someone else, the act of throwing, catching, running for it, you know, getting in position, being outside among nature as much right. as I can for it is wonderful. Now are we on a flat surface? Yeah, we're on a flat surface that more likely than not has is man-made. Right. Man curated. So could you have frisbee in the real world? Maybe. Yeah. 
maybe like in the Great Plains, you could have, you could play Frisbee just fine. Anyway. Anyway. But that's, I really enjoy doing that. And then I don't mind going on a hike every now and again. I don't mind that. Love walks. Love walks. And so you have to ask yourself, what, what do you like doing? Why, why does it have to be metal does that, have to be that you move around and then right. rubber that you stand on and machines that turn and whirl and do all this stuff? Why does it have to be that? Or why does it have to be you running? Right. Why can't it be walking? Do you know what I mean? Totally. And even then, why does it have to be walking? It can be literally anything that you want it to be. But this takes us to another another place because almost everything we talk about with Verstra has to do with environment. Right. And, and by that I mean the world's environment, yes, but more importantly, what's your personal environment like? Oh, yeah. So if you like walking, where is there a good walking place near you? Uh-huh. Find a good place that you like walking at and walk there every day. You really like walking? Then that's not a that's not a difficulty for you. Right. You'll find a way to include that in your time. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Me and me and our son used to go walking a lot. Until it got super hot. Well, even then, we would still go walking and we just had a lot of watering spots, places where we could drink oh, water. Yeah called them watering holes but like I really really enjoyed that because it was along this this um, long path it was along this path with some greenery and then there was this uh, I guess you would call it I don't know what to call it either uh, yeah I don't know what to call it I for, I'm forgetting but it's the drain oh, it's the, yeah it's the drain for all the water that lands in the neighborhoods it goes down into this natural area that just has a bunch of plants that's how they can maintain the plants there. Otherwise, the plants wouldn't do very well. And we just walk along it. And I'd walk two, three, four miles a day, like daily. Yeah, I remember. For that. a long time. And it was lovely. And it was good for my body. It was good for me. And I really enjoyed it. I wish I enjoyed this walk as much. Also, it's summer now, so it's just, it's so hot. So you gotta think about your environment and what you can do with your environment and trying to change your environment so that you can do the activities that you want to. Yeah. You know, when I was a teenager, the Wii was the big thing. The Wii, the video game system. Oh, okay. I thought you said the weed was the big thing. No, the Wii. Okay. W-I-I, the Wii. Video game system came out in 2006, and I was able to get it pretty early on, and I would do the boxing on the Wii Sports disc that comes with the Wii. So stressful. And if you've ever done that, the Wii boxing, it's, it's, it's a workout. It Who really is. Who even uses technique with that other than you? Huh? I don't know many people that actually like have a technique with that other than you. Oh, okay. What I just, all I've seen anybody do other than you is just be like. <laughs> yeah, people just enjoy it. And I just enjoyed it too. And, and I it got, still gives you a workout. And I got really, no, yeah, totally. Yeah. I'm like no sore. My arms is. are all sore afterwards. Yeah. But what's so interesting is that that's, there you go. Like even now, if we had a we we had with boxing, I might consider doing it regularly, I just because it's it's fun, <laughs> it's fun. Yeah. So it's like it doesn't have to be what it doesn't have to be the gym. It doesn't have to be the marathon. It doesn't have to be a run. It doesn't have to be a workout video, because that's what a lot of people are doing these days. As we go on YouTube, we join these little programs, we take courses, and you have these little workout videos. And there's so many ways to move your body. Yeah. That's very natural. And so the point that I was trying to make earlier 
is <laughs> why is, is that a that... phrase we're always using just just say it now okay do you know what i mean yeah like we're always going oh what i, I was, was trying to do this earlier it's like and then you if we have if we have me. an open conversation mm -hmm. that should never be a phrase you use okay because yeah you might get interrupted but if it's an open conversation you'll have an opportunity to speak mm -hmm. you know yeah you're right so um i feel like moving and movement is a very natural and inherent part of being human however what's happened with humanism which is not about being human which is really funny but right. <laughs> what's happened with humanism is that we've yeah we're starting it, it is true we are starting to sit more and we are starting to um, be under the impression that we need to make a, some huge effort to and be intentional about moving our bodies um, yeah I think I think that when we were um, just back in the day, when we didn't have all of these constructs and whatnot, you were hunting, you were foraging, you had to walk to get places, you couldn't even ride a bike, you couldn't um, ride a carriage, you couldn't ride a whatever, ride in a car. Um, so I think that was just a part of surviving was being fit. Like you didn't have to think about working out. And so what I'm in the camp of, so you're kind of more like, oh, like let's have as much recreation as possible, which I agree with. I think that is a really great thing to do. It's like, you like playing Frisbee, have fun playing Frisbee. You like taking walks, go ahead and take some walks. If you like running, You go, like we boxing, go do we boxing. Yeah. What I'm kind of in the camp of is I want to um, have a lifestyle that invites me to move. Right. So I want to, you know, we're going to be planting right, our could... garden pretty soon. And that's going to be, you know, we're going to be on our hands and knees a lot, but we're going to be squatting and going to be doing squats a lot. <laughs> well, a lot of people don't know this is that um, we have this illusion, like you were even saying, that primitive humans did all this moving and stuff hmm. in actuality so you can take cultures where they don't have chairs like we do right like not even chairs like what you and i are sitting on we're sitting on floor chairs that have backs yeah they don't even have floor chairs that have backs right and you would imagine oh well then they do a lot more walking and a lot more moving around right nope they don't and in fact they actually spend more time sitting than we do really uh-huh interesting yeah, they did, they did analysis of cultures that have chairs and those that don't and how much time they spend sitting and versus standing or walking around. I totally thought, oh, if you have less chairs or, mm -hmm. you know, you just sit on the floor, you're going to be up more. Nope. They were, on average, sitting twice as long as cultures with chairs. That's very interesting. So it's like... You'd imagine that it would be like, oh, yeah. So we have this illusion that primitive man somehow was like walking constantly. But you make a good point. They have a lot of activities that are physical that we don't. Yeah. So when they are standing, they are getting some kind of job done. But yeah, they don't just, not just stand. standing. They're not just standing around. They don't just stand. And by they, I mean we if we lived in a culture like that. I mean, that's just the nature of the situation. You just... If you are going to stand, you're going to be doing, performing some function while you're standing. Otherwise, you're going to be sitting. And to note, a lot of uh, more primitive, is that what the word you're using? More primitive. That's, um, I, that's just... No, that's fine. I'm that's just, just making what most sure. people assume. Perfect. And so I'm not talking about primitive when I'm talking about when they analyze cultures today. These aren't primitive cultures. Okay. So I was just going to say a lot of cultures that are not so immersed in structures and don't have furniture they tend to squat yes and they tend to kneel they tend to squat yeah 
No, I, I know. I was saying they also tend to kneel and sometimes... Sure. Sometimes crisscross applesauce. But they're not... It's very... Oh, yeah. I'm the only one cross, that calls it that. Cross-legged. <laughs> Like what I'm doing so right now. So embarrassing. Cross, cross leg. Why do I... Most of it's squatting, though. What if, like, my kindergarten teacher said that once, and I just, like, now I just say it forever. I mean, I heard it a lot, but I never... <laughs> I never thought that was the the official term I thought it for was. This, the, the, the sitting position. Right. So I was saying they tend to what squat. What does applesauce have to do with it? It rhymes with cross. <laughs> It's easy to remember as a, as a child. Um, we can use that for our children and maybe not mention it publicly ever again. <laughs> um, anyway, I was just saying they tend to squat, which is really interesting, and I would not put that in the same camp as sitting on a couch. No. So that is different still. But you would think even then they wouldn't, they wouldn't be squatting as long as we sit on a couch. But nope, they're squatting longer than we're sitting right, on a couch. Right, right. So, in the end, we do learn to adapt with the, with the setting that we're in. And maybe one of the ways that we're learning to adapt with the setting that we're in is learning to force ourselves mm -hmm. to move and so, to be physical. Right. And to do something strenuous. Mm -hmm. But like, why? Why are we doing that? I remember when I was a kid, we had quite a bit of, you know, we had a good amount of land in Ohio and in other Midwest states. And there were these trees and you could go out into the woods and have this like, at least for me, it was like fantasy land, kind of like Bridge to Terabithia, but not as weird. Anyway. And it doesn't make children cry. Right. And die. The one time, one girl did fall off a, a, uh, a tree that was going across the ravine she fell off and broke a bone a bone a bone yeah she oh, didn't die though no. she was fine anyway anyway but that was that's how i played a lot of my time and that's why when my mom when i for the most part when i was into video games she wasn't that annoyed because i'd spend a good amount of hours every day outside right playing and so when I came inside and I started playing video games, she's like, oh, okay. And I would get my homework done mm -hmm. <laughs> first. Get homework done so she never had to worry about that. I never had to worry about that. And then I'd play outside until I got hot and sweaty. Then I would go play video games. And so she under... Yeah, anyway, my mom and dad never, never got me about stuff like that. Right. Anyway. As I, was... I, I miss those days. Yeah. Yeah, that's Where, that's basically what I'm saying here is I want to remind myself of those days where I used to just play as a kid and who cares who cares whether it's working out or whether it's running or whether it's how many calories are burned who cares. Yeah. You know, sometimes I play you... until I would fall to the ground and Go to sleep. Go to sleep. I did that recently, and I thought I was doing a bad job. No, I mean like play, play. Like I'm covered in sweat, and then just fall to the ground, almost as if I'm like, oh my god, I blacked out or something. But I wasn't. I was just so tired, just being like, holding and they'd be a like, little... are you okay? I'd be like, yeah, I'm okay. I just need to go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, what was I going to say? Um. No, I like I like what you're saying because we're just as adults we're just so scared of play which is so interesting that we're well, like actually scared to do it well and it's also hard I mean uh, I talked about this earlier but like frisbee requires a flat surface but true most true elements not elements most versions of true play don't require flat surface in fact they do better when there's not a flat surface mm -hmm. you've got varied surfaces you ever gone rock hopping that's so much fun you hop between rocks mm -hmm. from rock to rock mm -hmm. so fun it's crazy fun dangerous even for an adult crazy dangerous but so much fun 
And the reason why is because of the very nature of it and learning to position yourself and doing all this stuff. It's, right. it's fun. Right. So we go and, and, you know, we live in Arizona, so there's lots of variation in, in terrain. And for whatever reason, they, they see fit that what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to come in the, when they're about to build the house or whatever on the piece of land, they clear all the plants. That's problem number one. But problem number two is they flatten it all. Right. So you end up with this flat surface. And it's like, where's the fun in that? So we don't have that as much on our, on our piece of land. But we have it way too much. Yeah. To the point where our son feels like he can only play in the back in the unstructured area right he doesn't want to play in the flat surface is that oh, interesting it's so boring to him yeah he doesn't want to play there well then why would we adults want to play if it's a flat surface there needs to be some kind of game on the flat surface or else why do we why do we even want to hang out there <laughs> we we need a place oh that reminds me so if you guys haven't seen these videos yet you should check them out we, uh, we've been following Kanye West with his, his campaign. presidential campaign, and uh, we're liking what we're seeing so far. Yeah, we actually are. I remember it was maybe a year ago that he was saying, hey, I'm, I'm trying to work on sustainable housing. Mm. And then it was just like, even just a few months ago, he was giving some updates on the sustainable housing. And he said the, the number one key that they want is they want it they want the entire interior to be skatable. That's so funny. And so in thinking in terms of like, how do you create a space, an indoor space that is playable, that is fun, make it skatable. There's no sharp edges where you, you, where you would fly off a skateboard. I think it's so, so funny. I think my, well, my sister said to me the other day, she said, I think it's really funny that you and Kim Kardashian have similar interior design ideas. I was like, that's true. It's so weird. And then now you're talking about Kanye West's idea to not have any sharp edges or whatever. And I'm like, right. why are we like, why are we like the, the Kardashian West family? This is very strange. There you go. Very, very strange. <laughs> Did not see that one coming. There anyway. you go. But just thinking in terms of having a skatable area, why isn't, why isn't every piece of land that you might go to buy to live on keep its terrain and keep this playful, you know, we were going to go buy that one house that was on a, oh, was on a, so cool basically on a cliff you know yeah and then it had this giant wash below and it was beautiful it's been would have been the most fun place to play ever you know dangerous yeah. but so much fun to play <laughs> you know yeah and now now we don't have that so now we can't play our land is not as fun to play on as, as, as an adult me. or as a child. And our home isn't because it's all flat surface. All flat. And so we, then we wonder why our children don't have places to play and why we need a gym to even begin to feel like we can move. Move. A gym or a mountain to so, feel like we are allowed to move and have fun with our movement. What's so, what's so interesting is... What I'm getting out of this is two different ideas. Number one, create a lifestyle for yourself that involves movement or that encourages you to move. Yeah. Yeah. Number two is, I feel like that's actually, that's, that's it. Or you can be intentional about moving, but make it really fun. Oh yeah, if you build the right environment, I mean, if you like Frisbee, we'll right. have a place where you can play Frisbee easily. Right. Then have a Frisbee there. And then oh, make and sure you make have it, someone to play Frisbee with on I mean, a regular basis, and, and then think, there you go. And I think what's so hard for a lot of people is that when we're talking about working out, we make it into this like big event. I know I do that, where I'm like, oh, I have to put on That's the workout point. clothes. Yeah. Well, wait, listen. Oh my God, I have to put on workout clothes. I have to do this, I have to do that. 
when really what I have to do and you know maybe I'm wearing this dress still and it's not really ideal for working out but playing in my son's room with him on his little play um, he has a little you know his little play structure that he has in there playing there or going outside for a walk or like you don't have to like make it a big deal but and you know like your brother you and your brother play frisbee a lot and yeah. it's whenever we visit your parents house your brother will just be like let's go play frisbee and you're just like okay you're not like oh i need to get on my workout clothes and we need to drive to this place in order to play frisbee it's very very convenient and it's not a huge ordeal what's right. a huge ordeal micah is um you guys coming inside and needing water and being super sweaty that is the bigger ordeal i'm just saying the rest of it isn't a big deal anyway you know what i mean yeah yeah anyway that's, why that's I like, what i've gotten out of our conversation that's why i like calling it recreation but yeah exactly. it's about creating an environment that works for you so environment and lifestyle yeah yeah remembering movement in your in your <laughs> remembering movement in your place it's like it's so funny to call it that but that's what it is i mean i think we should have place mm -hmm. we should have place and it should be ours but we should also have movement with that place mm -hmm. if that makes sense well so my original understanding of what we were going to talk about today was I thought we were going to talk about natural movement more. So I do encourage... Maybe, no, that's totally a part of it. No, I agree. You having uneven surfaces is what creates natural natural movement. Yeah. Is not our, that's assuming, what our body is created It's not our, assuming that the ground is flat. Right. And, but that also gets us to play more. Right. We play when there is uneven surfaces. That's how we play. That's how we move around. You, you create something tactile. You make it so flat and stuff. Well, yeah, it's easier to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night so you don't die while you're trying to walk. But you don't play anymore. Yeah, you don't play on your way there. Uh-uh. Um, yeah, I like that. What, what I was meaning with natural movement is there is, I just wanted to say there's a lot of resources if you are interested in kind of more primal movement and maybe if you do have access to some um, terrain that's more playful and whatnot and wanting and you're not sure how to engage with it looking up natural movement is a really good um, place to start I feel like it's inherent though it is not inherent something you have to, to tell someone uh, it is inherent to a certain degree but how many things are inherent that Humanism has helped us to forget on a very deep scale a lot of things. I think it's a combination of forgetting, of helping us forget, mm -hmm. and taking those things away from us. Yeah. Not giving us access to those things. Right. And I think it's more the second one. Mm -hmm. Not giving us access. People want to be connected with nature, but there's, they're not given access. Yeah, it's not easy to. No, we're given access to tons of dead stuff, but not access to living things. Right. Yeah. Well, hey, thank you so much for watching our video. Um, if you want more videos about this subject, let us know. If you have any more ideas for what we should be talking about, let us know. We want to know. So in the comments below. In the meantime, thank you for watching. You are a deep fountain of unique identity, Vera Structor. Have a good day.